Hi, my name is Jenny Donnelly, and this is Shauna Danberg, and this is another episode of Don't Mess With Our Kids. Thank you for joining this podcast. There are men and women all over our nation right now that are saying we've had enough because the attack on our kids has gone way too far. And there is a grassroots movement called Don't Mess With Our Kids that is rising up in America, and we're asking you to join the movement because we want to see America turn back to God. We are in a crisis in our nation and we have to do something. You know, the church is the largest army on the earth and we are not to be an audience. We are to take action and become an army. And that is what this movement is all about. So the first thing that we're asking you to do today is to stand in your state capital on April 13th, every single state on this day, we'll be standing at their state capitol or a nearby location. You can go to don'tmesswithourkids.us to see how you can register and look for your state details. But we are going to be standing there that day. We're going to be praying as a community. We're going to be crying out to God. We're going to be thanking God for changing America. And then we're going to talk about reformation strategies. Also, mark your calendars for October 12th, 2024. We are gathering, inviting 1 million women and their families to pray fast and stand with us on October 12th. Let me tell you a little bit more about that. So October 12th is the highest holy day on the Hebrew calendar. It is the Day of Atonement. It is for the purification and the cleansing of a nation. So what we're doing is we are inviting other nations to join us too and to pray for America. So we know that many, many women will stand on the lawn that day at our nation's capital on the National Mall. And then hundreds of thousands and hopefully millions of women will gather around the globe in their homes and build an altar of prayer with their families and their communities on that day. And they'll patch in virtually. So this is a global day, October 12, 2024. And we're pumped about it. It's no family left behind. We are in the last stand for America. So we don't have the luxury of just, you know, um, thinking we're just going to do something later. We're going to do something now. And the guests that we have today, I love this woman. When I met her, I thought, man, I want to be your friend. You are an incredible, incredible woman of God. Let me read you her bio, and then I'm going to bring her on. Elizabeth Johnston is a speaker, podcast host, best-selling author, and founder of House for Him, a movement contending for revival in families across the globe. As a homeschooling mother of 10 children, you heard me correct, for over 20 years, Elizabeth has become a thought leader on issues of importance to families and people of faith. Her children are active co-laborers with her in the ministry, which makes Elizabeth a unique example and voice to mothers in this generation. Elizabeth has been featured on many major media outlets, such as Fox and Friends, The New York Times, The Blaze, and Christian Broadcasting Network. The pulse behind all she does is her love for her family and her savior, Jesus Christ. You'll have to check out the show notes because you can get um, connected to her through her website, elizabethjohnston.org, see her on social media. But Elizabeth, thank you so much for being with us today. We are so happy you're with us. You are a modern day hero, my friend. Yeah, <laughs> I am doing my duty. That's the way I see it. But thank you so much. I am uh, so, so excited seeing how God is using you right now, Jenny, for such a time as this. What an incredible spirit-filled mobilizer you are. Um, I have walked in some of your shoes and just want to hold your arms up in this season because I've, I've been really impressed watching how the Lord's using you. Thank you so much. Well, when you and I met, you got to, we, we got to have an extensive conversation and you started sharing your story. And I knew immediately I, I have to be connected with you because um, you kind of got vacuumed into the media space based on some of the efforts that God asked you to and the assignments for the pro-life movement. And you're yeah. just a mom who love your kids. You know, you love life. And you saw what was happening with the abortion issue in our country. And you just decided I can't sit back and do nothing. I have to do something. And so I know that you never planned on being on Fox and friends and all these you know media outlets, but that's where God put you to be a voice um, for the innocent and for the unborn and for mothers, maybe who didn't know what to do. They, they thought maybe abortion is the only way out. It's the only, it's the best way out. And so I know that 
we can't even know right now on this side of heaven how many babies have been saved by you. Um, of, of course, God working through you, but it takes our yes, you know, to work with God. So yes. you and your family, but would you just start by sharing your story and, um, you know, offline here, I told Elizabeth, Hey, share whatever part of your story you want to share. Um, it's extremely meaningful. I believe that today, the people that are listening, in fact, I want people to share this broadcast, please share this, especially with single mothers, especially with those women who've gone through a trauma, through a betrayal, through a divorce, and they might be thinking that they are disqualified right. oh, yeah. from being one of the women that God is calling as a leader in this hour. And this story is going to debunk all that. It's going to yeah. make the devil yeah. go, man, I had a good excuse going with them. I had totally deceived them that they were disqualified. But you know what? Today you're going to hear um, Elizabeth's story and you're going to say, hold on a minute. I can do great things for God, even though I've been through betrayal like this before. So can you just start by sharing this part of your story and how you came to be a single mother of 10 amazing kids? And then we want to get into what you're actively doing with them right now. Sure. Um, yeah, I got married and we had 10 children and obviously that happened over 20 years time. I was having a child about every two years, um, got saved when I was 13 years old, uh, filled with the spirit of God um, when I was 16 years old. And I've just been on a, a wild journey ever since of uh, really consecrating myself to the Lord and um, was already a leader in pro-life ministry when I was in college. Uh, but when I got married, I really, um, really went low into the life of obscurity and became a diaper bag changing, a diaper bag carrying diaper chain, obviously yes. uh, changing mom for for 20 years and loved it so much. Um, cannot tell you how much I love being a mom, um, knew that I could not send my children into the public schools and um, and only have them for a few hours a day and, and really keep them um, safe. And so I uh, went on the journey of homeschooling and have, have loved that. It's not an easy journey. We could talk about that more later if you want to, but um, God blessed me with 10 children and they are my absolute joy. And one thing that we, uh, I was married to a doctor, a medical doctor and one thing we were really passionate about is uh, saving unborn lives. And so I have been taking the children out to the abortion centers um, ever since they were babies. And we would go out and pray. My children very quickly began to uh, have musical giftings, worship leading giftings. And we would take out guitars at the abortion centers and we would lead in worship and just ask the spirit of God to come and do what, what we couldn't do. And that was wow. softened the hearts of the moms and dads wow. going into the abortion centers. So right here, I don't want to throw your thought process off, but I'm just so intrigued by this. So yeah. as a mother, you know, you're dealing with nap times. You know, I've had five kids. Shauna's had kids and she has grandkids now. And it's like, there's nap times involved. There's feeding kids. You know, I mean, as a mom, it's tempting to just survive, but mm -hmm. somehow you captured God's heart. And you said, I've got to carve out a little time to go outside a clinic with these babies and let them see what the enemy has planted. And let's see what God might do to overcome evil. I'm just, I'm, I'm so inspired by that. That's absolutely no. incredible. Was it just like this idea that you had one day or how did you even decide to do this? Yeah, we just we were networked with people who were active at abortion centers early on in our marriage. And um, but it was it was occasional. And here's where the story gets interesting is in 2016, I believe it was. I don't know if you remember when David Delighton went undercover with the Center for Medical Progress and he had hidden cameras on his, um, I guess, clothing on his suit jackets and um, pretended to be in the industry. And he went undercover and exposed that they were selling the baby body parts, the abortion doctors. Do you wow. remember that in 2016? No. So, mm -hmm. so we would occasionally go to abortion centers before 2016. And I was pregnant with my 10th baby, whose name is Eva Lively Rain. Um, 
for obvious reasons. And while she was in my womb, um, this just real shift took place. And so I had to have life or lively something, something in there um, in her name. But I was pregnant with my 10th child and I can remember being in bed and I'm still nursing my ninth. Um, and the ninth is laying there in, in bed beside me and my 10th is moving inside of me. Wow. And I'm scrolling on social media and I stop when I see these pictures, uh, these videos of these abortion doctors talking. This female abortion doctor is in a swanky restaurant. She's crunching on her salad and she has no idea she's being videoed. And she's talking about how she crushes the skull of the baby, but preserves the other organs so that the organs can then be marketed and sold. This is before anyone knew they were selling wow. the baby body parts. David Delighton and Center for Medical Progress bust exposed this. And I'm sitting there and I can hear my baby breathing beside me and I can feel my 10th baby moving inside of me. And tears are just streaming down my face. And I live in Ohio at this point and it's so cold. <laughs> it's it's winter, you know. And I have such a great excuse for not going out, driving an hour to Columbus, Ohio, to the Planned Parenthood. I lived an hour away. Wow. wow. And I said, that's enough. I cannot let these babies go to the slaughter. How am I any different than the people in the, the body of Christ who did nothing while the tr tr trains of screaming mm. Jews Ugh rode by their churches and they sang their songs louder. So they did not have to hear the noise of the screaming Jews heading to concentration camps. How am I any different? You know, I have a heated van. My kids can sit if they get cold and watch Veggie Tales mm -hmm. while mommy is rescuing babies outside mm -hmm. <laughs> of the Planned Parenthood. And so not only did I begin to take my children out weekly on Saturday mornings um, because my husband was off work and he could go with me and we could both manage the children. I wish I could show you pictures right now of the kids. You know, sometimes they were doing homeschool or or whatever. They were doing sidewalk chalk on the sidewalks and women would come over to us and they would say, help. I don't want to go through this. My pimp drove me here. Whoa. We would rush her to safety. We would exchange phone numbers. We would give her a gift for choosing life for a child. We would walk mm. her through the process, throw her a baby shower. Wow. And, you know, we saw so many things. I mean, we would convince the fathers of the babies when they had their, their, um, and I still do this. I still go out to the clinic here. It's the busiest abortion center in the Southeast here in North Carolina that I go to um, every other Saturday. But the father's windows would be, cracked this much while she's in there waiting for the procedures. And we would convince them. She just needs to know you'll support her, text her, call her, tell her to come out. And, you know, you'd watch this man who said, no, her mind is made up. There is no way she's budging. I tried to convince her not to. She, she has decided we would watch him text her and the woman run out and fall on his no. chest. Loving. So grateful, you know? And so no. my kids were never the same after this. Mm -hmm. No, they no. were marked for the kingdom. They were marked for ministry. They've never been addicted to video games and Fortnite. They're not perfect. I've had to pray them through all kinds of things. Let me tell you, and still will. I have a lot more praying to do. My youngest is eight still. Um, they're not perfect, but let me tell you, they were marked. And mm -hmm. when you, when you participate as a young person, in saving the life of a child. And you see, you're at a baby shower where a child would have been decapitated three months earlier or, you know, drowned in salt solution seven months earlier. Mm. It changes you. And my kids have been marked for the kingdom and they are Levites, prophets, intercessors. Um, mm -hmm. They are going to, they're going to do so much more than I could have ever dreamed. And so I want to encourage um, the moms out there that there is something for you and your children to do in the kingdom. And let me tell you, if I couldn't do it with my kids, I didn't do it. Um, I'm true. very, very adamant about moms being very focused on doing what you can with your children. Mm. And so it was something that we could do together. I know not everyone will, maybe for you, it's volunteering at the pro-life pregnancy center 
or homeless ministry. I mean, there is no end to the needs out there. Right. But I say, grab your kids, put them in a stroller, do the work of the kingdom early, and they'll never be the same. Mm, that is so good. You know, what I'm loving too about your story, and, and we work with so many moms and we hear, you know, the obstacles that moms feel that are, you know, like, how can I do this? And, you know, I think what happens that I'm picking up on is a lot of women compartmentalize like, okay, I can't do both. You know, I can't. Okay. So your kids were, you know, sidewalk chalk or they're doing their homework in the van, you know, or you're right there. You, you were willing to, right. uh, put life all in one thing rather than wear hats. And I tell people, listen, I could, I couldn't do the homeschool hat and then the church hat and then the ministry hat. It's like, nope, we wear a crown and, and our kids oh. go with us. And <laughs> Let's um, go. I got, yeah. And I got on a, I got on an airplane maybe five years ago and I sat next to a, a pastor from a church. I really respect, mm -hmm. um, never met her before she sat down next to me and we got talking and I told her, I said, you know, I just told God, I will do anything for you as long as my kids can be a part of it. Come on. And she said back to me, she said, well, I think God is saying you can only do what I ask you to do if your kids are a part of it. Mm. And I was like, wow. oh, so God actually wants my kids involved. It, I kind of felt like I was like, okay, God, I'll do anything. Like but. asking him. Like ask, yeah. yeah. I was like mm. convincing him yeah. that my children had to be involved in it when yeah. he was like, no, I actually need to convince you because culture, even church culture, is there's yes. a special room where kids go to get out of our hair, right? And I, I've told people, let's not take this youth, you know, kids church thing so far that we yeah. never – got them in the main room. We never uh -huh. let them see like, you know, prayer hubs, like bring them in. They need to be yes. praying with us. They need to see worship. They need to see crying. They need to see testimonies. And so you are a walking example of that. And I, I'm just so encouraged. Um, tell us a little bit more about your story, how you became a single mom, because I believe this is going to encourage a lot of people. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I began to actually organize and lead teams out there at the abortion clinic. And it was one of the first times that I think the Lord was trying to show me that there was more for me than um, homeschooling because I was so happy to homeschool. I didn't need a platform. I didn't need a microphone. I didn't need a ministry. Okay. My children, my husband, my home was my ministry. And you've never met a happier mother to do those things for the rest of her life. And so, but as I began to lead those teams, I think the Lord began to show me that he was calling me into, into more. And, um, and I began to speak to some of the issues that were going on in culture. People started asking me, Hey, Elizabeth, could you film a video on, you know, target opening up their bathrooms for transgenders and all, all of that that was going on back in what, 2017 um, began to speak, basically just apply the word of God to what was going on in culture, not political, not, you know, uh, all, just Republicans versus Democrats. Lord yeah. knows we got plenty of political pundits out there, but began to apply what the word of God said to those things. Um, and I would take scotch tape, like clear scotch tape and tape my iPhone to my rear view mirror of my 15 passenger van. Okay. This is how, this is how advanced I was. <laughs> and I would sit in the van because it was the only quiet place on my property. <laughs> oh yeah. And began to film these short little videos that I would post. And um many of them went, you know, very viral. Um when Teen Vogue magazine began to teach kids how to sodomize one another, for instance, I filmed a video and you know, all the demonic voices were telling me, no one's going to watch this. This is embarrassing. This is stupid. Don't do this. You're going to make a fool of yourself. And I um, asked my husband, would he please make me a bonfire in the backyard? And I got a Teen Vogue magazine and I burned it in the bonfire, filmed a two minute video, said they are pandering obscenity to minors. This is illegal. This is immoral. And Teen Vogue is trash. And you need to, as parents and grandparents, go get it out of your stores and your libraries. I was mocked ruthlessly. Mm. I posted this thing. It went so viral. I think 17 million video views. 
Wow. I was mocked, um, called everything you can imagine, blonde Hitler, redneck Barbie, um, you know, all, all kinds of things. Twitter just said the unimaginable about me, but we were making a difference and we launched Operation Pull Teen Vogue and parents and grandparents went into their stores and libraries and demanded that the uh, Teen Vogue be pulled from the shelves. And five months later, a publication which had been in print since I was a little girl, I can remember seeing Teen Vogue when I was a little girl, went out of print. We truly destroyed them um, with no funding, wow. just a grassroots campaign. Uh, we destroyed Teen Vogue and all of Condé Nast's other print magazines like Glamour and Brides, they stayed in print. This was the only one, the one that we exposed for being pornographic. And so um, the Lord has just invited me into opportunities like that. Uh, and he just wants our yes. He's looking throughout the earth for a heart that is pure toward him. And he wants to bless that heart. He wants to bless their efforts. He wants to breathe. But we have to give him something to breathe on. Mm -hmm. See, and Jenny, that's what you're doing right now with this movement that you're building and with this huge risk you're taking um, in October on the National Mall is you're giving God something to breathe on. And I know he's going to do it. I've been in your shoes so many times and I know he's going to do it. But that was one of the first things, you know, that he, he asked me to do. And there were many others. There was the day of mourning um, where... Uh, was it Cuomo in 2019 was the governor and he signed the infanticide legislation uh, for babies to be born all the way up to 40 weeks to be, to be killed. I should say not born all the way up to 40 weeks, lit the world trade center up pink. If you recall that in celebration of infanticide. And so without any funding, again, totally like God, you have got to breathe on this. We, uh, we, um, a solemn assembly, the day of mourning in Albany, New York, uh, in a venue right underneath the state house where all of the feminists and Cuomo had been clapping and celebrating over infanticide. And within three weeks, we did the event within three weeks of the ruling. So <laughs> three weeks, a national event Come on. went completely viral, um, again, with no funding. And we had almost 4,000 people in attendance at the event. And Jenny, there were 40,000 people watching via live stream, repenting, mourning, weeping, crying out to God. That was 2019, February of 2019. And I strongly took the platform reading from Isaiah, warning our nation, if we did not turn back, if we did not repent of this bloodshed and of the pride and the love of money and power and the corruption, that God was going to send judgment. And it was one of the most powerful things that I had ever been a part of. And then, of course, COVID hits not long after that and really comes to New York um, first <laughs> in, in, in a substantial way. And then I'll be honest with you, as I drove home in my 15 passenger van, of course, my children watched all of this go down. Um, we're a part, we're a huge part of the day of mourning. My One of my daughters was my total right hand person adminning everything. One of my adult daughters, wow. when I, when I drove home in my 15 passenger van, um, my life really imploded. Uh, we had put a, a massive target <laughs> on our backs, um, for, for taking on the spirit of Molech. Yeah. And it wasn't long after that, that, um, I became a single mom and it has been a bone crushing three years but the most beautiful, beautiful beauty has come from the ashes that I could have never created, no matter how hard I tried. And for the women listening, I would say um, to let your hands that are going through, you know, hard things, whether it's betrayal, um, wh whatever it is, possibly in, in your marriage or relationships, my situation turned into a whole thing of um, spiritual abuse, pastoral abuse. It was, it was very narcissistic what I encountered and uh, the Lord delivered us out of it all. And he delivered us when we took our hands off the steering wheel. 
Yeah. And so I would say uh, to those of you who are still trying to make things work and fix things and um, control people's behaviors to really just relinquish and watch what happens when you relinquish. It, it might be really hard for a while, but God knows how to fight our battles so much better than we do. And when I started letting him fully fight it, um, it got wild, but it got miraculous. <laughs> mm. Wow, that's incredible. I'm just I'm just noticing that your entire life it feels like a victory story just mm -hmm. from beginning to end and I feel like you have such a spirit of victor over you. Mm -hmm. You've never been a victim. It just feels like you've never I don't know if that's ever been something you've entertained. You tell us cuz you know better than I do, but it feels like you've just always been a victor and no matter what comes along, you've had this victorious mindset. And I I'm just mm -hmm. curious because there's so many people that struggle with victim mentality, a victim mm -hmm. mindset, and they they whether that's I have kids in diapers, so I can't do this, whether it's I've got a lot of kids, so I can't do this. It's I've no gone excuses. through this betrayal. I can't do that. It's just like you've never had that. And I wonder what it is about the way mm -hmm. that you see life, the way that you see God and you see yourself and you see others that has given you that victorious mindset that you carry so, so mm. strongly. That is such a good question. And I don't want to paint um, an inaccurate picture in any way because over the last three years, there have been so many moments that were so low. Um, I can remember the moment that I was really, really having a panic attack um, because of, of a legal situation I was encountering in the custody battle that I endured for over three years. And, you know, you come for my kids, you, you've touched the the absolute only thing second to Jesus that matters to me. And um, I can remember my 20 year old son being there on the bed with me, just, you know, praying over me and keeping me hydrated as I was encountering a panic attack. If I could just be, be real with you. Mm -hmm. And I, I had been crushed um, into powder yeah. <laughs> over the last three years. And, um, it was, it was such a beautiful thing that God needed to do in me. And I want to, want to say to lean in to the crushing, to lean, to lean into the intimacy that it produces with God. There's nothing like the intimacy with the Lord and the Holy spirit that occurs through times of crushing. And so I would say intimacy with the Lord has got to be absolutely number one. I went so deep into the secret place with the Lord over the last three years. It absolutely transformed me and, and pulverized me and transformed me in every way. And it allows you to continue to hear God's voice over your life, that you're not a victim. It allows you to begin to discern between the words of the enemy over your life. Oh, you know, you're, you're, you're done with God's done with you. You're, you're benched. But there have been many days where all I could hear is you're benched you know, your time is over. Mm -hmm. um, God's done using you. But as I would always go back to that secret place with the Lord, you can hear his voice again. His mercies are new every morning. You read his words and you hear his thoughts over you and you realize, you know, that's the voice of the enemy. You have that discernment to recognize one from the other. And, and you lean into the voice of God and you take captive those thoughts that tell you, that there's not a hope in a future. Come on. We know that's not God's voice. That's, that's demonic. That's the voice of the enemy. And so intimacy with the Lord is just got to be number one. And it keeps us grounded, um, anchored in the truth. And then you've got to walk through the process daily, whatever that, that looks like um, for you. It's obviously going to be very different than it looked like for me. And one of my joys is coaching women through this journey that I've been through. It's one of my favorite things to do is to coach women through uh, what they're going through with narcissistic relationships, divorces, custody battles and whatnot. So I was very victorious by the grace of God. I do have um, full custody of my children. Um and they do still see their their father. They have visits with their father. But um, I was incredibly victorious. But it was through it was through the word of God, through intimacy, mm -hmm. through prayer, through fasting, through getting my um, 
my strategy from him. Mm -hmm. And honestly, prophetic words um, have really been a massive roadmap for me over the last three years. I know we're going to put this in the show notes, but where, where can people find you? Because people might be going, oh my goodness, I am in such a similar situation. Yeah. How can I find her? How can I, co how, how can she be my coach or how can I access the thing that, that she has to offer? Sure. Where can people find you? I think everything that you would need is on my website at elizabethjohnston.org. Okay. That's perfect. Thank you. Well, I think about, you know, just a couple of keys that you said, you went into the secret place. Yeah. And I have to say that Shauna and I would both agree that through our, you know, her and I have had different challenges, but is yeah. there anybody that the enemy doesn't try to sift through and completely crush, like you said? Totally. But it is the secret place that we found our foundation. We found grounding. We found something under our feet that wasn't um, moving and accusing us. And it was, it was, you know, God himself is the Holy spirit working through the hard conversations, working through the pain. You know, for me, I just wanted to be like, okay, you know, I, I just want to be a winner for God. And God's like, well, let's talk about how that hurt you mm -hmm. when you were 12. Let's talk about how that affected you, Jenny. And I'm like, uh Oh, here we go. I'm not going to stop crying, you know? And so he yeah. took me through really scary conversations that actually ended up being, you know, overdue tears. And I had to cry through things. I had to find compassion for myself, actually, because mm -hmm. I then could have compassion for others. So the secret place is near and dear to my heart when you say that. That means so much. The mm -hmm. second thing I'm hearing you say is that you had to give away whatever God was giving you. So it wasn't just, you know, I'm going to sit in my secret place, you know, amen. You know, you that it's actually really dangerous to only look inwardly and then not pour out right? So you found people in a similar situation and said, well, God gave me this. I have to give it away. And you did that in the midst of your own pain, in the midst of your own healing process. And that mm -hmm. I can say is an incredible, if, you know, if there were such thing as a formula, that's an incredible formula. It's like, yep, I have to tuck away with God. I have to have hard conversations. I have to cry. I have to forgive again and again. I yes. have to, you know, tell God, man, I feel like giving up. God, what do you say about this? And there's so much that happens in a secret place. But then when God gives you something, can you be courageous and selfless enough to say, there's got to be somebody out there that needs what God's done for me and in me. Mm -hmm. And I think that that has saved your life and it sa certainly saved your kid's life, right? Um, Absolutely. A beautiful process. I, I love that so much. Do you have any last minute thoughts you want to give. I mean, this has been so good. I actually want to schedule another podcast with you for homeschooling oh. because I know that a lot of people are pulling their kids out of school. They just don't feel like they have the confidence to homeschool. Mm -hmm. And I certainly didn't. I mean, I was like, wow, this is going to be interesting. Um, but I would love to have a whole ep another episode on homeschooling with you. Um, sure. Maybe you just want to give even a statement about that, you know, for women who are saying, well, now that I'm single, I definitely can't homeschool. And I don't know, like, what kind of last minute thoughts do you have um, before we end this broadcast? I think something that um, I haven't been able to touch on that I want to mention is just how important it is to be faithful with what God has given you. And I promise you, as sure as I'm sitting here in front of this microphone, if you are faithful, if you steward what God has given you, no matter how small or insignificant it, fe it feels, there will be more. He will give you more. It is an equation that is as dependable as two plus two equals four. Um, he will find you. He will pluck you out. And the idea that we think that we have to, you know, promote ourselves and, and, you know, network and all of this and that God won't find us. I am a living testimony of the fact that he will find you and pluck you out. I will never forget when I was in church, with my diaper bag and all of my kids. And I looked down at my cell phone ringing and it said the white house and the white house is calling my phone number, inviting me into intimate meetings and interviews with, with leaders that 
I never asked for, I never networked for. I mean, guys, we truly serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Moses, the God of Esther. And, and, and I watched him take this little homeschooling mommy and bring me into the White House because he knew that I would listen to his voice and do what he said, no matter how awkward it was. And I got invited in this meeting with Vice President Pence, intimate gathering of just, just a handful of us, two handfuls. And it was when COVID was hitting our shores, Jenny. Mm. And everybody wanted to talk about COVID in the room. So this is literally like the week before COVID. It's, COVID's in China. We're watching all the videos on social media of people yeah. dropping dead in China. And we're kind of like, what's going on? And so everybody in the room is COVID, 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 COVID for all their questions. And I've literally gotten a phone call the night before in church to come meet with Vice President Pence. And I'm sitting there in this room and I'm going, okay, God, you have invited me into this and it's not to talk about COVID. And I knew he had brought me in as an Esther to agitate. Remember how Esther had to agitate in that meeting yep. with the king? Yep. It was very awkward and she was risking everything in that moment. And so I said to Vice President Pence, when everybody wanted to talk about COVID, I said, we love how President Trump is so bold on so many issues, but he campaigned as a pro-life president and we want to know where the beef is. We want to know where the results are. Why is he not shutting down the government? Because over 3,000 babies, unborn babies are dying every day until he gets pro-life legislation passed. Mm -hmm. You could have heard a pin drop in that yeah. room. And this is before Amy Coney Barrett, this is before Roe v. Wade is overturned. This is before we had all, you know, things started to move after that. Praise God. But in that moment, nothing was moving. And so the Lord will invite you into opportunities if he knows this is a steward. And that stewardship sometimes looks like just being a faithful mom, just being a faithful wife, you know, <laughs> being faithful with a little ministry that God has given you in your church, whatever that is. And then when he knows, okay, she's locked in, this girl will do whatever I ask of her. Just like you, Jenny, right now, God has asked you to do some things that most women could never dream of saying yes to. But he knew you, he had found a heart that was completely pure toward him. And that's what he's looking for. And so my, my heart for, to close out here is to say, just be faithful right where you are. Stay low, stay humble, stay in the secret place, stay obedient. Whatever that thing is God's putting on your heart, you're going to be blown away by what God does through you. Wow. Wow. Elizabeth, mm. I am blown away. <laughs> I will never forget when you said that you were brought to powder. And in my mind, I immediately saw the powder that is put up against a bullet to be shot yeah. and mm. how without that powder like the bullet gun is gunpowder. I, I did too. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. It's like the bullet I mean the Holy spirit with the message, but it needs, it's like, we've got to get to the point of being powder mm -hmm. in mm. order for the bullet to go and be released. So would you just pray us out? Wow. This has been such a blessing. I just feel like your, your anointing has been deposited on our listeners and on us. And so we thank you for that. But yeah, just pray us out. Sure. Oh, Lord, we love you. We love you. You're everything. We're here for you. We thank you for our lives. We thank you for the opportunity to be your ambassador, God. We thank you for the great honor and privilege of serving you, the honor and privilege of, of being wives, being mothers, Lord, stewarding the next generation, the opportunity to, in essence, rock the cradle and rule the world, God, the power and the strength you have given us as mothers, we do not underestimate. And we thank you, God, what a privilege you've given us. And Lord, I just pray that there would be stewardship and faithfulness and grit imparted in this time together with the women listening, Lord. I just pray that there will be such an encouragement as people have heard the, the struggles that 
I have overcome and am still overcoming God, that they will realize, wow, God's not given up on me. There is so much more for me. Lord, I just pray for a spirit of Esther, a spirit of Jael, a spirit of Deborah to rest on these women listening, God, and that you would build an incredible community between all of us, Lord, through the Esther network. Don't mess with our kids, God. This incredible community you're building, Lord, so that we can see true revival and reformation in our nation, true revival and reformation in our families, in our homes. And God, I just pray that every home represented listening here today would be covered in the blood of Jesus. We thank you. You are our Passover lamb, God. We thank you that all evil ricochets off of us and our homes and everything that pertains to us, Lord. And we cry out to you, the Joel 2 prayer, God, that you will have mercy on us, that you will forgive us of our sins, that you will heal our land according to 2 Chronicles, God. We thank you for what you're building. We thank you for what you're doing in the earth, God. And we're so honored to be a part of it, Lord. And I just pray a blessing on this movement in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Wow. This was absolutely life-changing conversation. I can't wait for women to hear this and even men to hear this. Thank you so much. We're going to have you back, Elizabeth. Love, Love you guys. You Honored to talk with you. You guys are heroes. Oh, thank you. Thank you. God bless you. All right, everybody. That was absolutely incredible. One of the things, Shauna, I want to say before we jump off today is do not delay. If you are a mother, a grandmother, an auntie, then we want to say start your prayer hub with those precious yeah. children. You know, you might hear Elizabeth's story and be like, oh, I don't know if I can go out to the, you know, Planned Parenthood. I don't, I mean, I want to do something. And sometimes we reach so far, mm -hmm. we can't actually do anything because we're not looking at what's right in front of us. Yeah. And what is right in front of you is the invitation to start a prayer hub with those precious babies that God has entrusted you with. You heard Elizabeth talk about stewarding and being faithful to what's in front of you. If you have grandkids, kids, nieces and nephews, once a month, get them together and print out this prayer guide. And if you have younger kids, the prayer guide comes for younger audiences. We upload five coloring sheets every single month. So you can put those kids at the coffee table. If they're two and three years old, let them scribble on things. You pray, ask them to say, amen, get out those communion cups. They're going to love it. They're going to love it. And they're not going to forget it because the presence yeah. of God is going to hit them. So I just want to let everybody know you can do something. There is something within the realm of possibility for you. And it's so simple and it's not super time consuming, but it will give much fruit to you and your children and your grandchildren. So go to hervoicemovement.com. Just go to the button there that says to start a prayer hub. It'll walk you through the steps. It's super simple. You'll have all the resources at your fingertips. Thank you so much for being a part of today's podcast. Please share this episode. There are women out there who need this encouragement today. They need to know that they're not disqualified and that they can lead in this revival and this reformation that we have right in front of us. So thank you for being with us. Thank you, Shauna. Appreciate you so much. And we'll see you guys next time.